Welcome folks. Thanks for watching this podcast. In this podcast, I'm going to talk about the disconnect between the business world and economics world and what had transpired in the last couple few centuries and what is more relevant in the current century as we speak right now in 2023 and beyond. Uh, what kind of a system is going to sustain? That's what we are going to see in this uh, podcast. Uh, if you're here for the first time, my name is uh, Maya Kannan. I'm a geoeconomist, venture promoter, venture architect, a serial entrepreneur, an inventor, and most importantly, I'm a social scientist who enjoy working with businesses, startup companies, governments, economic zones, and other global organizations, including nonprofits. It is common sense uh, that the economic theories and social sciences developed, you know, all over a period of thousands of years, right? So these things existed in different names and different formats, social sciences and uh, economic theories. Especially the last few hundred centuries, um, there are a lot of uh, economic theories who came, which came into existence uh, to this world. Uh, many philosophers started uh, digging deeper into um, the world of economics and social science and they collaborated um, information and gave fantastic theories and um, methodologies, you know, to some extent, to the world. Uh, but uh, in my work, uh, myonomics, as we speak in this podcast, myonomic, the concept of myonomics came from the framework that I developed um, after I, you know, spent a couple of years in, the, um, in my research um, in the philosophical, logical, and uh, intelligence um, research that I have gone through and eventually I developed and uh, um, developed and patented uh, a framework called Karma Capsule Network. Um, it's not ab just about uh, intelligence but also you know deeply into economics, uh, social science, etc. right? Uh, during that, I found uh, most of these later stage uh, literary works um, uh, when it comes to economics and the social science had uh, been deep rooted in the early philosoph you know, philosophies uh, from uh, Plato, uh, Aristotle, and uh, other people, in including the later days by Immanuel Kant. Um, but uh, my special interest in my which, under which the Karma Capsule Network and eventually the Moyanomics was born was from um, Aristotle's uh, nominalism. Uh, that's what I believe the uh, recent and the future generation of uh, economics and you know, political and social science uh, is more relevant. Uh, before coming to that, um, you know, at the end of this uh, podcast, I would like to uh, put a foundation uh, towards that, explaining uh, what transpired and you know over the centuries and why it is more relevant, right? So um, there is a in the late in the recent few centuries, there is um, you know in the recent few decades, there's a few little interest in the economic theories and philosophy, you know, um, and uh, social sciences and etc. Uh, among some of the ca countries. And uh, surprisingly, interestingly and surprisingly, uh, these countries have developed, uh, you know, very well in the, in the, you know, uh, in economics and uh, they could able to uh, become, a, you know, among the top global powers. Example, Germany, Korea, South Korea, Japan, and now China. All these uh, nations uh, have one thing in common. They did not, uh, you know, follow the philosophical, um, social, 
economic uh, theories, rather they jump deeper into the basics of uh, you know uh, economics and humanities. Uh, you know, like uh, you know, getting things uh, uh, done on the ground. So basically, everything you know they learned from doing the job on the ground, and then eventually, you know, uh, making it as, uh, expand it, uh, you know, in a massive scale. Uh, so basically, they jumped into the um, basics of economics. Uh, basically, you know, the production excellence, focusing on the production excellence, engineering, natural science, uh, putting together the pieces of uh, the, um, you know, uh, science to, you know, create things and services that would serve the humanity better, right? So uh, nothing can match with such kind of a learning on the ground, right? That's what these other uh, countries and the institutions they created, they supported, showed to the world, right? Um, learning from the ground. Now this is what, um, you know, uh, and, and not only that, how they were, they could able to uh, create, you know, master the art of uh, how to propagate the learning on the ground backwards all the way into the uh, integral components of the uh, organization and the institutions uh, across the board wherever they are you know uh, related to so you know the enterprises uh, um, the extended enterprises right you know these days the enterprise is not just one company you know private company enterprise uh, extends well beyond the uh, scope of the organization it goes to multiple organizations multiple countries multiple societies uh, across the world right so they could able to propagate these learnings uh, to their advantage and make it as an integral part of the whole um, organization and its uh, relationship to the other organizations as an extended organizations including to the governments right that's the key to their successes um, so there is a huge disconnect. They could able to thrive by identifying and working on this huge disconnect between the the practical world uh, and the you know and what's happening uh, at the theoretical world. Right? The theories are good, but then what uh, theories uh, which fail to learn from the ground, um, you know, doomed to uh, fail or you know if they become highly uh, irrelevant. Right? The um, unfortunately, our schools, the uh, you know universities, uh, the and all the you know um, programs that you know they uh, teach social science, uh, economics, uh, business. You know they have a lot of uh, you know theoretical derivations and have a little relevance to the practical world, including the practical politics. Right? Um, I coined the word po practical politics because. The books of political science and you know, over thousands of years, you know, a lot of the current generation politicians really don't follow those um, playbooks, right? Because they pl those playbooks were written uh, with certain kind of idealism um, you know, embedded in it, right? They use the idealism only to win over their enemies, but in reality, they don't really follow the idealism, correct? Uh, they use it as a deception. So those economic theories based on those political ideologies uh, obviously, you know, doomed to fail, correct? So uh, that's a, you know, the, so there are a lot of uh, wrongful interpretations and misrepresentation of these economic theories to the advantage of the, you know, uh, the, to the to the to the political advantage of those who practice them. Right? So, in my uh, framework, um, long uh, about 15 years ago, I developed a, a framework called PTP, Philosophy Practicality Theory, uh, Philosophy Theory Theory Practicality uh, Framework. Right? PTP framework. So, 
That framework says uh, anything that can be uh, explained in one word becomes a philosophy, and anything that can be explained in uh, one uh, line can be um, can be detailed uh, in multiple ways uh, using theories. And any any theory uh, that comes from a deep, sound philosophy needs to be uh, can be and needs to be implemented in one or many ways practically. And every practical implementation, again, gives birth to new philosophies and new theories. So it has to be a cycle with the feedback, right? And now I see that uh, some of these uh, very good economies, uh, uh, you know, successful economies around the world and the institutions, they had learned the uh, uh, art of this backward propagation, learning from the ground and, and making this information and the analytics and the um, and the uh, methodologies uh, of, uh, to available to the internals of their uh, organizations and institutions and the uh, uh, multiple structure around them, right? That's where uh, they have been very uh, successful, right? And um, implementation could be wrong, right? In some cases, the implementation could be wrong and which even, you know, uh, that implementation has to go away. How would you know that implementation is wrong on the ground? Only by deep diving and uh, revalidating with the theory and the philosophy. Probably something, uh, the, the, theory, the practical implementation is wrong because there is something wrong with the uh, theoretical framework that you develop. So every uh, case is different, every um, economy is different, every uh, region uh, in the world is different. So you can't have a cookie cutter solution for every uh, part of the world. So that's why you need to develop a, a custom um, uh, adaptable, adaptable and adoptable frameworks um, that would work for the local economy and uh, eventually the local businesses, right? So that's a um, key relationship between the economics and uh, um, you know the uh, global politics, right? Um, so uh, in the in the 16th and 17th centuries, the, uh, the you know there was a, there was only a political economics. Now economics was not called a separate discipline; it was a political economics. Economics and politics kind of tied you know together as a parallel thing, right? So people had a clear understanding political. Economic, they believe that economics is driven only by politics, right? Uh, but then, in the uh, that's where most of these uh, frameworks and uh, you know modern day uh, philosophers uh, came in, and you know many 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 th theories uh, came out of the those theories, and uh, there's a lot of debates, and you know many of them survived, and they could able to successfully apply. Uh, you know, mostly, you know, they are all applied successfully in the Western uh, part of the world. I'll come uh, quickly to that, uh, you know, within the next few minutes, um, why they could able to do it. Um, but then in the 19th and 20th century, uh, the politics, uh, you know, kind of swallowed the, you know, um, Basically, politics got separated out, and economics swallowed the politics into it. Uh, you know, uh, basically, um, economics started becoming a separate discipline out of politics with an assumption politics is included automatically uh, inside the economics, right? And then uh, from that point forward, uh, political science, the social science started, you know, becoming kind of separate uh, um, discipline and over a period of time they have kind of deviated too much from the economic principles. I strongly believe that is the basic problem we are, we are uh, right now uh, having uh, in the world. Um, we are suffering from that deviation. Um, same way the economics started deviating from politics or you know as it digested inside most of the uh, newer generation of economics coming in, almost uh, they don't have an idea or uh, skills uh, or any kind of an acumen on the political side of it, or political science or social science. Um, so that these two become completely deviated from one another and that, that comes a problem, right?
So, um, but the, uh, the problem, I mean, in the last century, the last uh, century, the business community had, you know, uh, had a lot of change in the uh, understanding of how the, you know, um, politics works and the, you know, same hold for the economic community, you know, the political community as well. The business community and political community had a lot of, uh, you know, uh, irrelevant uh, frameworks and they don't have a proper relationship established, uh, you know, between them. Um, so basically, the, uh, some people, you know, a group of people, a small group of people abuse the uh, economics as a subcomponent of, uh, uh, of um, politics and uh, they could able to dominate or run the po economics uh, through the political means and gains. Um, so every uh, political decision uh, made uh, had a, always have a greater impact on the economics. And same way, the, every economic uh, you know, change give rise to uh, new political uh, change, right? So they are kind of, uh, you know, they feed to each other. And some, you know, we all have to understand that part very clearly. Once these two were inseparable component, uh, you know, back then the understanding of economics and politics was very clear. Now, last few centuries it was lost and now some people definitely used advantage. So this is uh, one of the ways to explain the inequality uh, in the world, right? Why some countries thrive and some countries did not thrive. Um, if you look deeply into it, uh, what I said, uh, this is one of the ways to explain those uh, uh, deep divide, you know, um, inequality uh, among the economics around the world. Some part of the people practiced political economics, but the rest of the world, you know, left alone to deal politics separately and economics uh, separately, and that's where these uh, economies could able to win. A small group of people, powerful individuals, who retained the lessons from the past and gave a um, different uh, mirror to the world, could able to survive, not just survive, but they could able to dominate the world, right? Um, so the Western economics, you know, beautifully, you know, package the, you know, things together, um, empowering their own businesses, uh, creating champion organizations, examples you know, of uh, the shipping companies who are going around the world, uh, colonizing the world, and even the modern generation after the you know, 1900s, whatever the companies emerged as a global organizations, they all were embedded with uh, such a lesson from the history and they kind of uh, uh, was practicing political economics while the rest of the world uh, did not. Um, but with the beginning of the 21st century, with the rise of China, you know, and learning, um, you know, these political economic games, you know, many nations around the world, uh, organizations, and, you know, they started becoming more wiser. Um, then they started uh, understanding and started realizing to, you know, the two things, you know, both uh, political po uh, economic power as well as focusing only on uh, ground level, uh, you know, practical production and uh, service solution creation economics are not going to help anymore. Even those organizations, those nations who created such organizations in the past, like Japan or um, uh, China or South Korea, uh, they were given that kind of a market access by the West uh, in return to their political game, right? We, we all know that. So even for those who who uh, you know focused on the practical uh, ground uh, on doing the job, you know getting the job done clearly is definitely a basics of fund you know fundamentals of economics. You know create great products, create services. That's a foundation. That definitely uh, that lesson should not be uh, you know removed out of the uh, equation. But on the top. Um, they were given market access uh, for the political game. And so that was also a political economics uh, game only. But then uh, China's uh, raise and, uh, and other economics now uh, learning lessons from the past are uh, you know, uh, changing the world slowly. Uh, and they also you know, um, are learning to use how political, um, 
political system to you know for their benefit but they are not doing it you know uh, very well they create champion organization i talked about in one of the podcasts about the champion organizations you can go and uh, you know watch that video uh, basically you know champion organizations you know were created by some of these newer economies a new growing economies uh, to you know get political gain and political economic social gain but then they are not doing it very well they are doing it uh, in a half cooked way that's where the problem is right um so that's where the uh, you know the under the uh, uh, that gave rise to the deglobalization because the west did not like it um you know uh, because the, when the other economies are raising and using the same rules from the books that western economies used of obviously western economies are not going to like it so there comes the you know uh deglobalization so every country around the world are you know kind of uh, going to the shell raising their uh, walls around them um you know uh, to lock out the other economies to you know uh, come uh, get interfered in their economics uh, which is very very uh, bad uh, deglobalization and uh, well, you know is not that it's not good but decentralization is good because uh, one thing there are two things right deglobalization is not going to be good for anybody but decentralization is good uh because centralization was uh, uh I- indirect uh, or uh, you know uh, yeah, it's a scheme that hatched by the group of economists the developed economists to you know have a control they created institutions that would um, uh, aggregate the power in a centralized uh, manner to apply that to their advantage right and um, that is good so decentralization and uh, giving back the power to the local economies which by the way the myonomics way of doing uh, things you know uh, the framework of myonomics uh, supports that decentralization of economics um, so truly federated a global federated uh, model has to be established in order for uh, the business and the economics uh, thrive globally um you know removing the um uh, uh, uh divide among the economies and uh, you know um the discrepancies um in the growth among the countries right um that needs to be done so um the modern day economics should have been a very clear alignment with politics and you know the economics should be the driver for the politics right it is you know end of the day politics is played uh, for economic gain right and economy feeds back to the political gain but at end of the day everything has to be driven for economic uh, reasoning correct so that's where the art uh, of uh, art and science of geo economics uh, you know um, which is um, old political uh, economics uh, given in a new um, uh, new bottle um for which is very relevant to the current generation um world right so until the um the 20th century right as i said before uh, i promise that i will come back in few minutes and i'm coming back so the western world used idealism right idealistic frameworks or theories social economic theories to their advantage they used those ideal them as a smoke screen to uh, do things under it uh, completely uh, away from the idealism but tell the world a mirror to the world idealism as their path of doing it right so they use that smoke screen and that they you know have you know created the world with so much of difference uh, in the uh, economic success among the world west uh, versus rest of the world right um so the uh, what are the things they achieved using this smoke screen right idealism um first of all they kept mass population um you know as workers uh, in industrial age it worked very well workers you know like kind of labor so mass population is taken care feed them give them the work and keep doing the work don't ask any questions and the second thing they did was keep the power uh, among small group of people elite businessmen and elite um, financiers and elite uh, politicians right 
and the, um, the information is power they could able to get the information and tell you know uh, give different framework to the world right then the third thing is they keep the global competitions um, and the global economies uh, at a distance uh, through this deception right they believe they made uh, the rest of the world to believe the idealism is the right way to follow right and uh, then they also you know manipulated the global markets correct but with the rise of new powers this transition um, you know is the transition from the you know these economies could able to do that beyond the uh, industrial age even after getting deeper into the information age they retained this power uh, you know by by controlling the information uh, and the media and other you know uh, things that you know uh, that could able to help them as well but with the transition from the information world to the deep tech information or intelligence uh, era um, they could not able to you know uh, they will not be able to hold on to this idealism uh, because the new uh, powers are going to be challenging them and the intelligence is going to play a very different role so artificial intelligence is n it's, it's a monster good monster as well as bad monster right so it can feed a lot of uh, things you know in 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 uh, multiverse right that's a that's a thing you can't really control remember the backward propagation of what happens in the ground to in interior in, in, to the integral parts of the structural economics um, that was very tough in the previous generation but with the artificial intelligence with the deep tech um, this uh, learning can be fed back into the system in a in a multi uh, facet and uh, 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 in a multiverse way and that is a beauty of it so even uh, you know the the, P, the p2p framework uh, in steroids right that's what i would uh, say the uh, you know the future generation uh, with the deep tech uh, in, you know with the use of deep tech and the modern day economics are going to uh, make it happen so uh, coming back to the original uh, question I put in. So basically, what is the alternative to the idealism, right? So the alternative to idealism is nominalism, which is what, you know, um, I have developed based on, uh, you know, I had developed my anomics, which is based on nominalism, uh, which is the fundamental philosophy of Aristotle. So Aristotle's nominalism gave birth to the modern day, uh, you know, uh, geoeconomic principle called myonomics. And um, that's what uh, I would say the world has to uh, take it forward. And that is beautifully in coincidence with the uh, newer innovations uh, where the nominalism, one of the major problem with the nominalism, even 2000 years ago when it was developed, was the tensor, um, you know, characteristics of it. So nominalism is basically is all about, uh, while Plato said idealism, there exists a, a pure form of things, right? Uh, Aristotle came with the challenge, there's nothing called pure form. Everything has to be learned from the ground, basically from your surroundings, from your environment, from your ecosystem, correct? And how that kind of learning uh, will be put back into, propagated back into the integrals of your system, right? Uh, back then, he was not talking about the modern day uh, economic systems or business systems at all. In a way, he probably, you know, he, he is a visionary. He definitely was thinking about not only the internal, uh, internalism of a human, but also the external. By the, by the way, philosophically, the world is created as an reflection of our internal mechanisms, right? So um, that's what, you know, the Maya is all about. What you visualize, what you, you know, are internally, that's where the world is created. The human created the world as a reflection of their internal thoughts. And that still continue to, um, you know, exist and keep transforming day by day. So the nominalism, which has a tensor form of, uh, uh, you know, uh, structure, that means uh, it has multifaceted information. It has to collect information in various uh, aspects and characteristics. So the, the world is not going to be driven, a system is not going to be driven by one characteristic, you know, as if, you know, this is the ideal state. All you got to do, this, this is you're done. No, the tensor is multi, you know, uh, at least nine characteristics as I developed in my economics, 
right, has to be uh, uh, taken into account for every object, every data, every uh, information out there. You got to collect and analyze it in uh, in the in the tensor format, right, and then propagate it backward into into the system, whether it is an economic system or political system or a zero economic system, right. So um, that's where the beauty of uh, you know geoeconomics is going to play. So moving forward, uh, myonomics is uh, one of the way definitely uh, to achieve it. But there will be more uh, such frameworks coming in, and uh, they are all going to be talking about uh, more on this front, right? Uh, not on the idealism anymore. So idealism. Uh, is not going to survive anymore or desert the world anymore. It's going to be nominalism for the decentralized world. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. I would be glad to talk more on this topic in the forthcoming uh, podcasts. Um, feel free to uh, contact me, maya.kanan at mayakanan.com or uh, send me an email or uh, contact me through uh, any other means. Uh, I'll be glad to answer your calls and uh, I look forward to having you on my next uh, podcast. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.